and advance. We are security. Around 38,000 German federal police officers want to be measured by that motto. On water, fire. On land, and in the air. A strong force for Germany. The federal police. The Federal Police Department in Hünfeld, Hessen. Approximately 250 members of the Federal Police were gathered by Chief Superintendent Jürgen Bohl for a large-scale exercise. The situation we're practicing today is common. There's a soccer match where two opposing fan groups are present. The journey to the stadium was peaceful. But there was a violent altercation during the match, which has resulted in injuries. A demonstration is being simulated, with federal police officers acting as violent soccer fans. As for physical violence, everything within reason. The folks in the blue shirts are your colleagues who will be on duty with you next week, so act accordingly. Let's go. A group of federal police officers accompanies the fans, who have come from far away, towards the local train station. A punch, a kick, a strike. Hate, hate, hate. Hate them, hate them, like never before. The police have surrounded the fans who pose a risk. Two platoons with reserve forces and a water cannon unit are standing ready at a distance. The chief of police, Michael Busse, is leading the operation. Suddenly, opposing fans of the home team appear and provoke the crowd. Hey, you wankers! Come here, you assholes! The situation escalates as fans breach the police cordon. The platoon leader halts the pursuit on orders from the commander. Cordon them off. Freeze the situation and take charge of the cordon at your current position. I will follow the forces. Michael Busse decides to deploy the reserve forces. Consider the situation before taking action. If it's peaceful, then there may be no need for intervention. However, if there are provocations or crimes, it is advisable to bring in the closest people immediately. This will allow for a timely and appropriate response with adequate strength. The commander is in contact with all units. The next instruction is for those in charge of the water cannons. I want you to position yourselves at the back of the line. As soon as the first bottle is thrown, go for it. <laughs> Last year, the federal police conducted 1,650 operations related to soccer, resulting in over half a million deployment hours. Stop your illegal actions immediately. Compared to the previous year, the number of attacks on federal police officers has risen significantly. The other side too, full width of the road. Stop. Violent soccer fans, serious riots at protests, attacks with stones, bottles and fireworks. Daily business for the officers. The best insurance is having the support of those around you. When you approach a challenge with professionalism and good preparation, and have the right team and training, you can go into the situation with confidence that will all work out in the end. But this type of work is not for everyone. It requires the ability to handle spontaneous and unexpected situations. You have to have the right character for it. Fireworks are not a crime. Get lost, you bastards. If possible, move up behind the police line with two water cannons and threaten to use them. Get closer, get closer. 
Achtung, es erfolgt eine Durchsage. Attention, this is a police announcement. You're throwing stones at people, creating obstacles and setting them on fire. Stop your illegal actions immediately. If you don't comply, the police will use direct force against you. Open the police cordon. The rioters make no attempt to stop their aggressive behavior. The water cannon is used. I repeat the police announcement. Refrain from throwing objects at the police. When stones and bottles are being thrown, it is always advisable to have a water cannon at your disposal. Police and the water cannon team should operate together. The rioters retreat until they're out of the cannon's range. Move forward, move. The barricade on the main road is now being cleared by police. The Federal Riot Police deploy Special Vehicle 4 with a clearing blade. We're advancing. Police forces and water cannon advance. Tell them to stop the provocations immediately and stay together. Refrain from setting off fireworks. Fireworks are not a crime. Watch out, watch out. The firefighting teams are deployed to combat fires, especially in cases of fireworks. In the previous year, 709 federal police officers sustained injuries while on duty. Who reported an injured person in the police line? Friend or foe? Approach the cordon on foot from the rear and pick up the injured person. Platoon officers have trained paramedics who provide first aid to injured colleagues. They practice treating simulated injuries, including head wounds. The evidence and documentation unit uses specialized vehicles to identify criminals in a crowd. These vehicles have advanced technology to quickly pinpoint suspects. This vehicle has a mast with a video camera that can extend up to four meters. The camera can film from above the crowd to record criminal offenses. The camera can rotate 360 degrees in any direction. This is the joystick and this is the camera. I can control the camera with the joystick and access all the functions. I can operate it just like a camera that I hold in my hand. The task of the German Federal Police includes protecting Germany's maritime borders. The BP-82 Bamberg is one of four new Federal Police Sea Patrol vessels cruising the North Sea. Hans-Joachim Paulsen is the commander of the 19-strong crew. We're currently monitoring the wind turbines. We have the gas pipeline and a data cable here. They are critical infrastructure for Germany. Since the attack on the Nord Stream 1 and 2 gas pipelines, Germany has paid more attention to protecting critical infrastructure. The Bamberg monitors shipping traffic is used for sea rescue and hunts down polluters. We're currently using a drone. Later today, we'll fire the alarm shot with a long-range weapon. We're still in the training phase. Using it is still special for us. The Bamberg was retrofitted with an onboard cannon after it entered service. Three federal police officers are responsible for the onboard armament. This is a Bofors 57 MK3 gun equipped with 57 mm ammunition used by the Federal Police for dangerous situations. It's an artillery gun with a range of over 14 kilometers and a fire rate of 220 rounds per minute. That's almost four rounds per second. This state-of-the-art gun is also suitable for air defense. It has very high rotation rates and can rotate 360 degrees at a lateral speed of about 55 to 57 degrees per second. 
This enables us to engage air targets that move very quickly in the MAC range. I'm collecting the life preservers. The crew changes every six days. This crew has not yet fired the new onboard cannon. Today is the day. We need to get everything ready, like collecting the buoys nearby, because the pressure wave created during the firing process can damage them. The crew is removing the position light from the bow. The boom needs to be taken down to avoid being in the line of fire. Of course we're looking forward to using it now. The situation is serious if we have to use the cannon. But you are happy when you can apply and practice what you've learned in theory. You do various training courses. Looking forward to being able to shoot. The upper deck is clear. Now the men take care of the cannon. We're currently conducting a technical inspection of the cannon's interior. The barrel is equipped with a recoil buffer, which slows it down. There's also a liquid inside that needs to be checked, and our colleague is currently carrying out this task. We don't want to shoot the barrel out of the bank due to the recoil. This is a maintenance task that needs to be done. The turret checks are complete, and the hardware is ready. The gun scans the field of fire and compares it with stored data. It leaves out the entire superstructure of the ship and the bridge to prevent any damage to the pipe and to ensure that we can aim properly without shooting ourselves. We always conduct a test to make sure the system is working. This ensures that we won't accidentally shoot ourselves in the process. The German Federal Police justify the robust appearance by citing new challenges they may face at sea, such as the threat of international terrorism. Sometimes there are situations at sea for which the normal police are not adequately equipped. When we encounter certain ships, for example, with our ship, we can just break through steel, shoot rudder systems or damage engines. We can fire a shot across the bow. The water column is almost 20 meters high. Rioting in front of the Hünfeld Federal Police Station. In an exercise, the Federal Riot Police trained to deal with violent soccer fans. Police line advancing, caution, fireworks. The line of police officers advances. The rioters retreat. We want to keep our opponents together to limit their ability to cause trouble. The more freedom they have, the more tools and weapons they can gather, like stones or other objects. Hold the water. Water stop. The federal police officers with the red marks on their uniforms are part of the evidence and arrest unit. What are you doing? On your knees. One of their tasks is to pull individual offenders out of the crowd. He physically assaulted police officers. We have a case of attempted assault here, which is why we've taken hold of him and are searching him. Shut up. That's always good. When the officers come, you are reassured. After all, they've been trained for special measures and operations. Cordon advance, prepare for enclosure, H-130, and close. Michael Busse orders the officers to detain the violent fans in a kettling. Cordon hold. Hey, why are you touching me? Hey, is that what they teach you? Old cops are pigs. The next step is to prepare for the identification of the rioters. We're peaceful. What are you? I'm walking. Why don't you walk faster? The federal police have set up a processing lane with service vehicles for the entire group. We prosecute whoever commits a crime. Take the first people out now. 
I'll stop with the announcements and go. We see the first person being pulled out. The other protesters are supporting him. The barrier will remain in place to prevent anyone from breaking out or any other mishap. Hey, what are you doing, you wankers? That's good. That's how I want it. The federal police are now taking people away one by one. They search them, take down their personal details, and if necessary, file criminal charges for resistance to state authority and for breaching the peace. Come with me. Now it's getting better. Very nice. The scenario seems real, even if this is an exercise. The more aware you are of potential outcomes, the less surprised you will be. Because this is what we do every day. Andreas Niklas from the Evidence and Documentation Unit analyzes the video footage. This is the person? Throwing something at a police officer, right? Exactly. This is the photograph. Here you can see the person who injured the officer. Look at me. We have the footage in the vehicle. It can be processed now. Very good. I need to inform you that you're suspected of committing a criminal offence. According to the evidence, you threw an object at a police officer, causing her serious head injuries. This act is considered a breach of the peace, as well as dangerous bodily harm. In a real-life scenario, the woman would have been taken before a magistrate. However, the federal policewoman is not a criminal and was playing the role of a rioter during an exercise carried out by the Hunfeld Federal Police. Exercise leader Jürgen Bohl is satisfied with the troops' performance. The riot police serve as the fire department of the federal police. Whenever there's a situation that requires our intervention, we are deployed. Thanks to exercises like this, our interactions have been working very well. On board the BP-82 Bamberg in the North Sea, the Federal Police Sea Task Force has arrived at the firing area northwest of Heligoland. We have a long-range weapon because there are legal requirements that may make it necessary to stop other ships, and for that we need to be adequately equipped. We're getting ready to fire a warning shot, which we will be practicing regularly in the coming days. Although this is our first time, it will become routine later on. The sharp shot is a maneuver in which the entire crew is involved. The turret itself remains empty. Crew members on older gunboats used to sit inside the gun apparatus. This is no longer the case today. The gunboats are now controlled from the bridge using a fire control system that includes an MFC and a console where an operator sits. The MK3 naval gun is equipped with highly sensitive sensors. We have an EOS device here. It comprises a TV camera, an infrared sensor, and a laser targeting sensor. The pipe camera mounted below the pipe allows us to see the position of the pipe in relation to the target from above. Above that, we have a muzzle velocity radar that measures each shell individually. The shot deviation of 0.7 millirad gives us a scattering circle of 70 centimeters at 1,000 meters, making it a highly precise device. The 7.5-ton MK3 requires only a small opening in the deck and little space below deck. The final touches before firing. Here are the ventilation flaps for below deck. When we shoot, there's a lot of smoke and residue. It could spread everywhere, which of course is unhealthy. These are the final preparations we need to make before shooting, including removing the muzzle cap. In an emergency, we can simply shoot it off. The officers have to clear the back. Now it's going to get serious. The deck is closed during shooting. The watch commander warns nearby ships via radio. All stations, this is German Coast Guard vessel Bamberg on VHF channel 69. Gunnery exercise will be conducted in the military praxis area Echo Delta Delta 44. All ships are requested to keep a minimum safe distance of five nautical miles. Coast Guard vessel Bamberg out. The deputy commander prepares the ship's hospital for an emergency. I need to initiate the oxygen supply system. 
to compressors that produce medical oxygen. The oxygen we produce is then directed through the main line, which runs all the way to the front of the first aid room. We are fully prepared for any worst case scenario. A safety measure. Police Master Tristan York and Police Chief Lucas De Venta take up their position on the bridge of the Bamberg. We keep a close eye on our weapons technology. We have a direct connection to the weapon and can monitor its ammunition status. Additionally, we use sensor data from the computer for operational monitoring to assist the operator in the fire control system and help lighten their workload. This support is provided to ensure that the operator can focus on their own tasks without being overwhelmed. The tension is palpable. The commander initiates the firing procedure. It follows clear rules. Okay, then get us as low. Okay, then here we go. Prepare and load one shot. Command alarm at bearing 355 right, distance 1250 meters. One shot. 355, distance 1250 meters. Is prepared and loaded. Weapon loaded. Weapon loaded. Video recording started. WLO to all stations. Question safety. Radar. Radar is clear. Modar. Modar is clear. Weapons technology. Weapons technology is clear. Watch commander. Watch commander is clear. Sea room observer. Sea room is clear. Airspace observer. Airspace is clear. WLO to commander, message, all stations clear. Order, prepare to fire. Ready to fire. Ready to fire. Once the gun has the target in sight, it automatically follows it and compensates for the movement of the waves. Command, fire alarm shot, fire. Alarm shot fired. Hit observation. Water column detected. Weapon safe. The alarm shot has simulated a shot across the bow of another ship. The MK3 can fire four shots per second. Commander to FLS operator, command fire. Fire. The 57 caliber gun is capable of firing various types of grenades. It also has programmable fuses for time delay detonation. The main magazine has a capacity of 1,000 rounds. Hold the weapon. Gun safe. I'll take over. Yes, sir. The commander and the crew have successfully completed their first combat mission. That's it. From a technical standpoint, there's nothing to complain about. Everything is flawless. The onboard weapon worked very well. Everything went wonderfully. The teamwork also worked well. I'm delighted. That's a load off my mind. It's a huge responsibility that we have. It's good. I can go to sleep happy. <laughs> now it's time to clean up. That's the not so nice part, but it has to be done. Frankfurt am Main Airport, 360,000 flights a year, 150,000 passengers a day. Terminal 1 is home to Police Station 3. Chief Superintendent Florian Böhm starts his shift. At this location, the group leaders are responsible for managing the daily service. We have a personal coordinator who distributes the orders, an aviation security colleague, and at the very back we have the border police and general case processing. Additionally, we have three detention cells. They're currently unoccupied. The federal police constantly apprehend individuals with arrest warrants or traveling with forged documents. Hilal Unal also begins her shift. I need an automatic pistol with a double ammo clip. The police sergeant picks up her work equipment at the gun counter, an automatic weapon. We are responsible for patrolling the terminal. As part of our patrol equipment, we must carry an MP5 and an extra magazine at all times. 
Mit der MP können With the MP5, we can fire single shots and continuous fire. So wie auf Dauerfeuer schießen. Danke. Thanks. For safety reasons, the federal police always work in teams of two. That's the case yours. Wir laufen jetzt Streifen im öffentlichen Bereich. Dabei schauen wir. We're patrolling public areas, looking for suspicious activity to ensure aviation security and safety. Gefahren, die hier draußen lauern könnten. Florian Böhm receives a radio message through the button in his ear, requesting the patrol team's support on the arrivals level due to a dangerous situation. Hey. Hi, is that the object? Yeah, that's it. Shall we block off an area behind the elevator and you do another area towards the stairs? It's a common occurrence at the airport that passengers leave their luggage behind. The concern is that we can't determine if it's merely an oversight or if there are underlying motives. There's a possibility that the luggage contains explosives or prohibited items. We have a barrier here. You have to leave the area. Please leave in that direction. We have to cordon off here. The federal police at Frankfurt Airport have an average of two to three such operations a day. We expel people from the area. We must keep them away from the danger zone, which is potentially there. We don't want to put the travelers or us in danger. In their haste, some people forget the risk. Am I not allowed through? Oh God, I'm late. A group leader is called over the radio. She decides on site how to proceed. The leader of the group has determined that the object could be dangerous. She's requested the assistance of the defusal team to help make a decision. The defusers will either x-ray the suitcase and evaluate the image to confirm that it's safe. They may take further steps. The terminal may need to be evacuated and a robot deployed to assist in defusing the bomb. The federal police has defusing teams that are specially trained for such tasks. They're on standby 24-7 at 15 locations across Germany. In Frankfurt, the defusing team arrives in a special vehicle. Chief Superintendent Florian Böhm and Police Sergeant Hilal Unal ensure that the area is clear before proceeding with the defusing process. Our primary responsibility is to monitor the surroundings and keep an eye on individuals who seem curious about our security measures. We aim to prevent suspicious activities such as dry runs, where someone leaves a bag to observe the police's response. We should avoid anyone attempting to spy on our measures. Or possibly trigger a detonator with a cell phone. It's important to take every situation seriously, whether it's a rucksack or a small handbag, as we can't assume that it's empty. The federal police officer from the bomb squad has arrived. He's a member of the elite forces and must remain incognito for security reasons. If I understand correctly, they've decided to x-ray the luggage. This is then evaluated on the spot, and then they decide whether to take further measures or not. The diffuser carries a mobile x-ray machine to scan the suitcase without contact. They're analyzing the x-ray film on the vehicle and assessing whether it's dangerous or not. All based on the pictures. The police have received the all-clear signal on the radio. They are now investigating the suitcase for evidence that may lead to its owner. The situation is now relaxed. And surprisingly, the suitcase is empty. It appears someone has emptied it and left it here, as it's broken and the wheels are missing. The zippers are also damaged, and the lock at the top is already broken. It seems like the person who left this suitcase did so voluntarily, without considering the possible consequences at the airport. Someone has simply left their garbage behind.
Verständnis habe ich dafür keins. I don't understand why some people leave their belongings unattended. Many simply don't consider where they're leaving their possessions. This is a common behavior we see among travelers who often leave their luggage unattended while they take a break. We often find ourselves holding their luggage when they return and they simply say that they went out for a smoke. If anyone causes a police operation, they will be responsible for paying the costs, which can amount to several hundred euros. The suitcase cannot be assigned to anyone and will be sent to the lost and found office. It's Saturday afternoon and there's a Bundesliga soccer game happening at the Ruhrstadion of VfL Bochum. The North Rhine-Westphalia State Police are conducting a major operation with the first task force of the federal riot police from Hünfeld stationed at Bochum main station. Michael Busse is leading the task force. Today is a very special occasion. The derby game between Bochum and Dortmund is known for hostility and has also experienced riots in the past. The police force of Hünfeld, consisting of 140 officers, is present at the site. Additionally, a platoon from the evidence and arrest unit is deployed. We're better trained. We deploy our unit faster for various offenses, including damage to property, breach of peace, assault and battery, depending on the potential danger level. Although the troops stay in the background, they're always ready for action. We never switch off, which is a small issue with us. When you're on the vehicle and actively engaged with the radio and other things, we also need to be alert and prepared at all times. The vehicle may start moving at any moment. The federal police has a specialized unit called BFE+, which is comprised of highly trained officers recruited from the BFE. This unit was established in response to the series of Islamist terrorist attacks that occurred in the mid-2010s. The BFE Plus is equipped to support the GSG-9 in operations against heavily armed offenders, organized crime, and terrorism. Back in Bochum. Come on, stand on the side here. The federal riot police protect the main station and the trains. Violent soccer fans are expected. The number of troublemakers shouldn't exceed 350 to 400 people. If we identify the train these fans are taking, we can accompany them to prevent any potential riots during their arrival. They don't know the time and location the hooligans are coming from. The goal of keeping the police uninformed is to catch opposing fans off guard. They want to maintain secrecy within their group and then show up unexpectedly. This way they can confront any rivals they encounter. We don't know what to expect. The commander has stationed squads at strategically important locations around the station. Hey, you okay? All's well. No one's arrived yet. Suddenly, information from a plainclothes officer. He must remain unrecognizable for security reasons. They're not at Dorstfeld yet? Ah, that means they're going to Hapenerfield. Around 400 people? The risk fans, yes. Undercover police officers who are familiar with the scene accompany high-risk groups and help to identify criminals. They played a trick on us. All right, thanks. Apparently, the Dortmund hooligans don't feel like messing with Michael Busse's troops today. They travel together, secretly using buses and other vehicles to reach Hapener Field in Bochum, which seems to be their meeting point. From there, it's a 15-minute walk to the stadium. Nevertheless, the federal police remain vigilant. Violence could also erupt at other fan gatherings. While the game is on and all fans are in the stadium, the situation is relaxed. Hey, everything quiet so far, no complaints. Nice. After the game, some fans who had a few drinks can get rowdy when their team loses, making it a potentially dangerous situation for officials. Ale, 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 ale. 
kann ja immer irgendeinen Funken überschreiten. You have to be prepared for any potential travel route overlaps that may lead to sparks flying and trouble starting. Also wir müssen uns auf alles einstellen. Bochum is currently in a good mood. The team at the bottom of the table has unexpectedly scored 1-1 against the title contenders. The mood among the Dortmund fans is subdued. To prevent any incidents on the trains, police units travel with them all the way to Dortmund. Everything remains calm. Clear the door areas, keep your distance. The E train on track five has now departed. The first bunch is gone. Let's go and count. There are still many soccer enthusiasts at the station. Michael Busse receives a radio call about a possible disturbance. Two squads of federal and state police are securing the rear entrance. Hey, do you need support? They were just running down the street or something. They saw us and ran away and turned back. Ah, the usual. What do you got here, two groups? We're only half a group at the moment. Not bad. I've got a BFE team in reserve. I'll call them if anything happens. Then we'll help them. <laughs> that was good. Good joke. The BFE unit is responsible for conservation of evidence and arrests. There was a group of 70 to 100 Bochum fans who were trying to enter near Bochum Central Station. A barrier was put up to prevent their entry. Although there was some movement, everything was still under control. The last Dortmund fans leave for home. It was a successful mission for the head of the police. The safety of my team is of utmost importance to me. I would prefer a calm operation rather than a loud one with a bang, but preventing crime is our main objective and we do not tolerate any illegal activities. The BP-82 Bamberg is currently patrolling the North Sea to safeguard Germany's maritime borders. The crew has been practicing firing the MK3 naval gun, which utilizes shells that measure 67 centimeters in length and weigh 6.5 kilos. These are the shell casings. This is only half of the grenade. The propellant charge helps to propel the bullet through the barrel, and the detonator, which has a small primer, ignites the propellant charge. The projectile head is screwed onto the top with a small guide band. The bullet also has a guide band. The barrel is rifled, which creates a twist, ensuring a stable trajectory. Some cannons have a smoothbore gun, such as the Leopard tank, but we rely on fields and rifling as well. A smoothbore gun achieves higher muzzle velocity for greater penetration when engaging armored military targets. But the naval gun is adequate for Bamberg's tasks. They need to be degassed for a day to dispose of the powder from the propellant charge. Then the patrol will dispose of them later. We're leaving them here now. The federal police officers in charge of the armament are now cleaning the four-meter-long gun barrel. We still have to get the pole out. I'll start spinning. Lucas de Venta puts together the cleaning rod, while Tristan York rotates the pipe to the right angle. That way, officials can slide the rod through the barrel. More towards port. Is that good? That's fine. You can come down. We still have powder residue from shooting on the gun. The first and most important thing to do is to clean the barrel. This is the same for every gun, to ensure that the powder residue is removed when shooting again. This hasn't changed in 100 years, as weapon technology has remained the same, even with modern guns. We use a brush and cloths to clean it, and then apply oil, which is quite greasy. You can see what's stuck here. The process is repeated until the barrel is clean. A shot with a dirty barrel can damage it. 
It's best to work preventively to avoid having to replace the pipe later. This is standard practice. We do the same with our service weapon after every shooting. In the Federal Police, you have to be actively engaged, especially when a storm is approaching. The sun has just been shining brightly, and in northern Germany, the weather can change quickly. However, it's important to be prepared for that. The gun is later dismantled and cleaned in the harbor. For now, pulling a cleaning pole through the gun barrel is enough. So, that's it. The lid. The day went well for the crew of the Bamberg, a successful test of the naval gun. Finished. Frankfurt Airport. 86 airlines transport 50 million passengers annually to 292 destinations in 92 countries. Two of the 2,700 federal police officers on duty are stationed at Terminal 1. Senior Police Officer Hilal Unal and Chief Superintendent Florian Böhm. Our daily routine involves inspecting the terminal and identifying unclaimed items, such as baggage. These items are then classified as dangerous or non-dangerous and handled accordingly. Another suitcase. In the previous year, over 800 unattended pieces of luggage, backpacks and bags were discovered by the federal police at the airport, triggering immediate security procedures. I just wanted to close the door here. Okay, then I'll stand here. We found a piece of luggage outside the airport building. It was probably left behind by someone in a cab. The state police are responsible for handling such situations. We've cordoned off the area to ensure that nobody walks into the danger zone. You have to take the other entrance. Thank you. You, you want to go inside? Yes. Then you can take the next entrance. Every unaccompanied luggage is screened for explosives with the help of a specially trained police dog. The state police have now arrived. The luggage will be classified as harmless or dangerous based on whether the dog detects something or not. The dog did not trigger the alarm, allowing the officers to safely open the suitcase and examine its contents. Suitcase full of women's shoes. That's great, we'll have something to try on. These are shoes, children's shoes. All right, good. Take them to the lost and found office. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. The colleague will take the suitcase to the lost and found office. If someone claims it, it'll be given to them. Otherwise, it may be sent to an auction or donated to a charity. The federal police have a dog squadron at Frankfurt Airport. Police Superintendent Dirk Monsam and Police Commissioner Dirk Kifaba are on duty today with their service dog, Kara. Kara, a five-year-old, is trained to detect explosives. If a traveler has left a suitcase behind, it may contain some items. We conduct preventive searches regularly, and in case of any threat situations, such as an aircraft with a bomb threat, we evacuate it and perform a thorough search to ensure safety. There are two types of explosives, commercial military explosives and improvised explosives, which are commonly used by terrorists or attackers. Dogs are trained to detect these explosives. Today's location, the terminal. Dirk Monsam has a sample for his dog. This is PETN. It's a type of plastic explosive used in the military. It's safe to handle because it can only be used with a detonator. Dogs are trained to find it. It's crucial for them to be successful, as we can search for days without finding anything. So as a reward, we also hide fake ones from time to time. Let's go. The federal police operates two service dog schools. 
Dogs help to enhance flight safety as part of their operational concept. Caro, look. Come here. Look. And come. Our directorate prepares a daily situation report, which includes a risk analysis. But we can't specify a particular route from where explosives may come. Our operational area covers the entire airport, so the threat can be present anywhere. That's why we're there, to search and make the area safe before anything happens. And here, search. An explosives detection dog can work with its sensitive nose for about 20 minutes before needing a break. The dog should either sit or lay down depending on the location of the explosives. Service dog Kara signals that she has detected something. Yeah, come here. Well done, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, super. So, she found her explosives. Which the officers, of course, seize immediately. So she found her toy. She loves it. And that's the motivation behind her hard work. We have thoroughly searched the surrounding areas and have concluded that it is safe. Passengers can proceed with a regular check-in without any concerns. The BP-82 Bamberg is currently sailing in the North Sea towards the coast at maximum speed. The Weather Service has issued a warning for an upcoming severe storm with wind gusts expected to reach up to 62 miles per hour. It can become quite uncomfortable. Due to the approaching storm, we're changing our course towards the Yada and plan to anchor there. This will allow us to ride out the storm safely, protect our crew, and prepare for any potential operations. The Bamberg is sheltered from rough waters in Yada Bay. Two men will lower the chain weighing several tons into the water. Boatsman Volker Jakobs leads the anchoring maneuver, while Tristan York operates the capstan and anchor brake. Due to the storm, he wants us to remove all the chain lengths today. That means raising the chains up to seven lengths, disengaging the clutch and slowly removing them. We then proceed to remove eight and a half chain lengths. Tristan York has to control six and a half tons of weight. I wait for his command when he receives the green light from the bridge. Then he gives the command to let down the anchor and I start the engine and the chain starts to rush out. You gotta have a feeling for it. Let's drop the port anchor. We'll release seven and a half lengths of chain and then stop to make sure the anchor holds and the chain is properly carrying the weight. Once confirmed, we can slowly release the remaining half length of chain. That's exactly how we do it. The number of chain lengths is crucial for our safety because the anchor alone is not enough to keep the ship in position. The more chain lengths we use, the safer we are during windy and stormy weather. If we don't use enough chain, the anchor may come loose from the bottom and the ship would drift away. This could be very dangerous for us, especially at night. The ship cannot maneuver until the chain is recovered, which could cause it to drift into a shoal or another ship. Machine Machines back. The Bamberg has reached its anchor position. Oh, Off with the chain. Oh, Out of the okay. chain. Drop anchor. Fine Drop anchor. Fine anchor. Oh, Step on the gas, gas. faster. Yeah, yeah. The 1.4-ton anchor is released. The anchor chain is released at a very high speed, approximately two meters per second. After that, we need to make sure that we slow down the chain in time so it sinks slowly to the bottom of the sea. Four chain lengths to water. Half of the chain is out. And slowly, the anchor chain is 220 meters long, roughly the length of two soccer fields. Six chain lengths at the capstan. The chain stopper locks the anchor chain. You can already secure it. Tristan York is securing the chain into the gear drive of the capstan. Secured. Good, let's see if the anchor holds. Slight underground vibration, can you feel that? 
there's still a slight vibration. Bridge to back, chain is holding, but there's still a slight vibration. Yeah, I got it. Chain's still vibrating at the anchor. The anchor and almost the entire chain are already at the bottom of the sea. Sometimes the anchor doesn't dig in with its flukes because of the ground, even though we may have the chain lying on the ground. In such cases, the anchor is pulled over the ground despite the slack chain and the metal. This causes vibrations that travel through the chain. It can be felt. We're now releasing the last link in the chain, the last half meter. Tristan York is now able to control the winch from the control panel. The boatsman is hopeful that the anchor will grip into the seabed. Four off again. Break once and uncouple. Anchor holds. Got it, anchor holds. Break engaged. Good, that's that. When other ships are in distress at sea, the Bamberg will set sail to save lives. At sea, on land and in the air, the Federal Police, a strong force on duty for Germany.